Welcome to my video for spiritual health. Um, this is my third in a series of three, um, which is physical, mental, and spiritual. And so this one's my favorite, and so I'm probably going to make this a little longer than the other two. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going over the foundations of spiritual health that are on my free printable that you can get if you go to my website. And you can download this, and it's got a week on here that you can check off every day to make sure that you're doing all these things. And some of them are not actually something that you do every day. They're just, you know, they're, they're, they might be something that you do once in a lifetime, but the fact that they're on this list will put them in your mind. And then, you know, even thinking about them once a day is, is fine. So this is going to be about six different categories of uh, things that you can do to achieve uh, spiritual health. And the first one is life purpose. So it's actually been proven. Um, there's been studies on this. And I have them in my blog post about this. Um, that having a life purpose, knowing what your life purpose is, and living your life purpose... Um, it attributes or it contributes to your happiness and it really has been proven to make people happier so it's just another reason for you to find out what that is if you don't already know and um, there's a lot of ways to do that um, following your heart was kind of a cliche thing to say but it's really there's no other way to put it really I mean everybody has things that they love and everybody has hobbies everybody has interests and it's just a matter of finding the thing that you love the most the thing that you're good at the thing that the world needs um, there's a lot of uh, courses online that you can take to help you figure out what your life purpose is um, I'm going to promote the one that I took because it was so comprehensive. Um, if you ever go to the website actualize.org, it's ran by a guy named Leo Gura, and his uh, life purpose course was excellent. It was, it took a couple of days, and to me, I think that's a good thing when, um, when you pay for something and you're in it, you know, it's, it's a, it's a thing and you got to, you have to, you know, there's worksheets, there's questions, there's so many questions, but it's worth it in the end. It really gets you where you need to be as far as knowing what your um, life purpose is. So check out our course online. Um, there's also volunteering and I like to talk about volunteering because I actually did this once and I used to think that I was meant to work in music because music was always my favorite thing. But I um, I volunteered at a recording studio and a pretty famous one actually. Um, Nirvana recorded there and it's only 20 minutes from where I live. So I, I volunteered there. It was a good, you know, temporary test to see if if you're a good fit for the you know for the environment whatever and it was great at first but I the thing that I was doing there was had nothing to do with music it was cleaning so I was like a you know housekeeper um, but it was cool to do but I realized as time went on too that I didn't want to work in music I just wanted to enjoy it so if you think that something is your life purpose but you're not sure, it's a great idea to volunteer because that way you're not committing yourself, you're not spending money, you're not you're not wasting a whole lot of time because you can walk away, you know, you can do it for, for one day if you want. Um, another way to find your life purpose is to try a new hobby. 
Um, a lot of people, they don't make time for their hobbies, and it makes me so sad because I feel like I can't narrow them down. I've got I've got probably 30 hobbies, and I can never have enough time to do them all. Um, so when I see people that don't spend time on their hobbies, it makes me kind of sad because you know, it's it's why we're here, you know, to enjoy ourselves. So make some time for those hobbies, and maybe one of them will turn into your life purpose. And the next one on this list. Um, this is probably the most obvious one, but it's higher power, um, attending church or whatever the equivalent is for your religion or whatever, if you're just spiritual and you're not religious, um, you know, there's spending time in nature, which is actually a, a whole different one on here, but, um, whatever religion you are. Or if you're not any religion at all, it's it's important to connect to the higher power in whatever way, whatever way that you can do that. If that's just you know lighting a candle and sitting and and thinking, meditating, whatever that works, or staring up at the sky, you know those sorts of things. So connecting to nature is the next one on this list. Um, and I kind of went into that a little bit, but there's a lot of ideas on this list, um, like going camping, which I think is one of the best. It's one of the healthiest things you can do um, because you're well, obviously you're out in nature, but you're you can you know run barefoot on the beach in the sand. You can look at the stars. You can have a campfire. You're not sitting there on your phone. Well, most people aren't. You shouldn't be anyway when you're camping. Um, so you don't have the electronics. You're taking a break from social media. You're taking a break from the phone. Um, and you're just focusing on the people that you're with and nature. And that's so healing. And it's a good way to get in touch with your spiritual side sitting around a campfire it's it's kind of a connects you back to what our ancestors used to do meditating outside is a great one this is probably the best place that you can meditate i think um and well it's also good to do it indoors but doing it outside is a whole different thing it's because your mind kind of automatically calms down when you're outside your mind gets really um not empty but it's it's the last place your brain is going to be going 100 miles an hour so if you have trouble meditating just go outside and try it it's probably going to make a world of difference for you planting a garden or a tree which is I mean, a lot of people have said it. It's one of the best therapeutic things you can do is gardening. And planting a tree or something similar is is a great way to connect with the earth and just get a sense of the fact that you're supply you're you're helping something to grow that's gonna supply oxygen, you know, for future humans when you're not here anymore. And the last one on the part for nature is walking barefoot on the earth. Um, this is, it can be called earthing, it can be called grounding, um, but it's, there's, there's a lot of scientific words that I, I always fail when I try to explain it, but it's the negative ions that come from the earth, they're good for us. Because humans are electrical creatures we have we are made of energy and there's something about having your bare feet on the the soil the grass the sand in water that recharges our battery so to speak um, <clears throat> i recently watched a couple of podcasts and i can't remember which ones they were that talked about this in detail so just research that and you'll find some pretty interesting stuff about 
and grounding and how that's healthy for you and helps you feel connected to the earth. And the next one on this list is learn. Learning is something that I think we should all continue to do, no matter how old we are. We should never stop learning. And learning about spirituality, um, finding a guru, um, and I use guru in an, a, a different way. The, most people think of guru, and they think of someone that's, you know, maybe trying to start a cult or, or thinks that they're God. You know, that's not really what I mean when I say guru. Um, what I mean is people that have studied something for most of their lives and actually lived that they have, you know, they've walked the walk. They know it, they know it inside and out. They, it's no longer just things that they know. It's wisdom. It's, it's how they're living. It's how, who they are. Those are the kinds of people to learn from. For example, um, Buddhist monks. Um, I know that there's a lot of Buddhist retreats that you can go to. And you can learn directly from from them so that that sort of thing so the next one on this list is going on a spiritual retreat it's kind of what i just talked about and those things are oh i've never been on one but i really want to but i think that's that's one thing that you could consider doing if you can afford it watching spiritual documentaries and that's uh one of my favorite things to do in life. I actually wish that I could just live watching spiritual doc documentaries all day. <laughs> that'd be that'd be a fun day, a fun life. But unfortunately, there's work to do and there's other things. So, um, but as far as spiritual documentaries go, I don't know if you have heard of Gaia TV. But Gaia is the best um, for spiritual information. I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a subscription to that. It's really not that expensive. Um, I don't remember how much it costs, but it's worth it. Um, and if you can't afford that, there's always YouTube. And YouTube is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, anybody can make a video and anybody can say whatever they want. It doesn't mean it's true. Well, you know, that's right, but there's also some good stuff out there, and there's also a lot of um, experts on YouTube. So pretty much every expert that I learn from is on YouTube, and it's a great way to just, you know, let it play in the background while you're doing dishes. It's not like you have to sit in front of your TV. It's it's you can listen and there's a lot of really really good um people who conduct m guided meditations on youtube and that's one of my favorite things um i actually have a blog post coming out one of these days that i will have a a list of my favorite spiritual experts so they'll they'll all be on youtube all right, the next one on this list, oh, I missed spiritual books. Well, that kind of goes along with uh, documentaries. Well, actually, I do want to say a little bit more about the books. Um, there are, if you're not religious, there are just thousands of books that you can read about just simple concepts like mindfulness, things like that. Um, People kind of make fun of the New Age section in the in the stores, but those sections they contain so much esoteric information that um, a lot of people think is I don't want to say the word weird, but they they judge it, and that's um it's it's really just hidden knowledge that's been around for thousands of years. So I encourage people to buy some books on that. Um, 
pretty much every quote unquote religion or um, what's the word I'm thinking of? A school of thought or um, a group of beliefs. They all have books like uh, spiritual texts or the ancient books that are said to contain all the information that you need. And that kind of reminds me of the one I just found today, actually. Um, it's Hermeticism, which is, I just learned about this yesterday. I don't know how I didn't know about this before because Hermeticism is pretty much like the study of spiritual awakening. And it's hard to put it into words because I'm not an expert at it yet, but what I learned about it was that it is just exactly what I like about spirituality. Um, so there's this book that talks about Hermeticism. It's kind of like the Bible of Hermeticism. And it's, I'm going to say it wrong, the Kai, yeah, I'm not going to be able to say it right, but um, I might put a thing in the video saying what it is. It's it's a word. <laughs> um, so that's a good, that's a book that I'm going to be listening to on YouTube. It's the audio version. But anyway, my point with all that, kind of went off track there, but um, it's what, what would be a good idea to do is to... Uh, School yourself on all the religions, all this, all these, whatever the other name would be for the other things that aren't religions. I'm kind of having trouble finding my words right now, but um, there's like a a book for each one of those, and you can buy them and or listen to videos about them, and just school yourself. You know, just learn all there is to learn. And then you can go from there as far as, uh, you know, which one feels right for you. Now moving on to the next one, we have contemplation. So contemplation is, it's kind of a cross between prayer and meditation. It's, it's like studying or thinking where you, you might actually have a book in front of you and you might, you know, read a couple lines from it and then focus on those lines. And just just contemplation means to think. So that's that's a really good thing to do. Um, I have spiritual retreats on here again because in the contemplation section, um, that's pretty much what you do at spiritual retreats. You you're going to them to be alone with your thoughts and think and study. And meditate and pray. And the last one on this list, this is my favorite subject, which is journaling. And if you know my blog or my Etsy shop or have watched all my other videos, you know that I'm a huge proponent of journals, especially gratitude journals. So there's two separate ones here. There's Gratitude journals, and then there's a regular, plain old daily diary. So the reason why these are good is because, oh gosh, um, there's so many reasons. I have written about this. I've got blog posts about this. But to put it into words, speaking is harder than, than writing. But basically... I think that it's the one, one of the most therapeutic things that you can do for your, for your mental health, your emotional health, and your spiritual health. Because you're getting your thoughts out, so you're processing your emotions, which is something we should all do every day. Every day, we're taking things in. And it's just unhealthy to go to bed without processing everything correctly. So the reason why I love journaling is because you're processing everything before bed. Hopefully you can do this before bed. I mean, a lot of people do it in the morning, which is good too. But doing it before bed, I think, is even more important because 
That's the time when you're purging your brain. You're doing the brain dump, you're getting everything out. You're processing your emotions. You're writing down things that, that are worrying you. And so then you are kind of taking it out of your mind and putting it on paper. And that sets the stage for sleep. So when you start journaling, you'll probably find that you sleep better. And then another reason why it's good is because you're, you're kind of your own therapist. And I think I mentioned this in some other videos before, but writing things down, it's almost like you're asking questions and you're just the stream of consciousness comes out of you. And sometimes, most of the time, it's how it's supposed to work anyway, that when you do that, um, that's when your your brain and your mind comes up with the answer, the solution, insights, breakthroughs, things like that. Especially when you combine this with meditation, contemplation, um, yoga, anything where you're calming the mind. So I think between meditation and journaling, those are Two of the biggest things that just work so good together as far as being good for the mind and good for your spirit. So um, having a daily regular journal is good for those reasons. And then the gratitude journal is a whole different thing. And that's that's even better, I think. I would I would start everybody on a gratitude journal before anything else. And the reason why the gratitude, the gratitude journal is so important is because it is the key to manifestation. It really is. It's when you're when you're grateful for what you have. It's a vibration thing, and then the universe will send you more of what of what you're thankful for. There's a whole lot more to the whole manifestation thing, but for the purpose of this video, and the purpose of talking about why journaling is good. Um, yeah, gratitude is, it's, it's good for the spiritual health. So if you took anything out of this video, get yourself a gratitude journal and try to find your life purpose. So those are my two uh, homeworks for you after you get done watching this video. I, I do have a gratitude journal a paperback version and I also have a printable version so if you go to my website you'll be able to find the links for those and I think that covers this list that was the foundations of spiritual health and like I said if you want this checklist go to holisticlifestyleguide.com and you can check up at the top where it says free printables and you'll get this and you'll get the the physical and the mental health checklist as well, as well as two other ones, which are a goal sheet and a health assessment to see how close you are living a holistic lifestyle. And I've got, I've also got a couple other free things, but that's, that's for another video. So that's the end of this one. And I would like to thank you for watching. And if you like this video, give it a like and be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.